Isn't he supposed to be hanging out with us? He's at work still, probably. Fair enough. Dangerous chemicals. <laughs> That's right. All right. Wait, All right. Wait. Welcome back to Cultivating Connections. Uh, I'm Amanda Brosanna Rios. I'm the Communications Director for National Grange, and I am joined today uh, by two ladies to talk about mission statements. So we are on a mission. Uh, so first I'll introduce Brittany Oliver. Hey, Brittany, how you doing? How's it going? <laughs> there you are. All right. We want to make sure our mics are all checked. And Chris Hamp, our national lecturer. Chris, how are you doing? I'm great. How are all you guys doing? Good. So um, we are talking about mission statements tonight. And this is a near and dear to both of your heart topic because it's something that you both have worked on a couple of times. Um, but I think it's smart to first define what a mission statement is. So generally, a mission statement is a formal summary of the aims and values of an organization or a company or an individual. Uh, and that's a pretty strict definition, or at least it's kind of stuffy. Um, so Brittany, uh, for you, what's a mission statement? I think it's a quick way to really grasp a group or organization's culture, like in a couple sentences, you know, what they're about and what they want to int intend to do, I guess. Um, Chris, you have helped lead a couple of workshops on mission statements. Um, so first, how do you approach it? What do you think a mission statement is and what isn't it? Well, a couple, a couple of things. Um, I think the best way to get started with a mission statement is for, obviously the group needs to, to say, we need this. We need, you need buy-in that the mission statement is going to help your Grange um, be focused on um, what sorts of events and, and um, fundraising and, and things that they're going to do in the community. And, and that mission statement helps um, with, especially with Granges with newer memberships, it helps everybody stay on the same page, I think. It, it gives everybody that phrase or that collection of a few sentences that says, yep, this is why I joined Grange, and this is, this is what we do and who we do it for. And um, so that's, that's the first step, I think. Okay. Brittany, um, I think that that almost speaks exactly to your group. Can you tell me a little bit about your Grange and maybe not how you went through the process because I want to kind of slow walk this so people can take some notes and figure out how they might do this but why your group decided you needed a mission statement yeah so my grange is relatively new we chartered in May 2017 and so 99.9% .9 of our members are new to grange um, and the idea came about because we were really looking for a direction to go. We had a couple events going, but we wanted a, a path to lead us there. And so when one of our members came and said, this will be a good idea to help direct us, everyone kind of jumped on board and said, yeah, we need a, an over underlying goal to what we're going to be doing. Okay. Um, but what if you're not new to Grange? I mean, I think that we oftentimes hear people who are new to the organization saying, what exactly is this organization? Because we have so many facets. Um, but we also have a lot of Granges who haven't, uh, you know, who are well established in their community, they kind of have a routine. Um, and they may not take in that many new members who don't have some other affiliation or knowledge about what we already do. So what if you're not new, Chris? Is this still relevant? A good process to do? It is relevant and it's a great process to do because it brings all of your folks together um, in working on the project and it helps to, you know, kind of cement in your own mind, maybe the, the why, why did I join this organization? And, and for many of us, that's been quite a few years ago. Um, for a lot of us, that may have just been within the last couple of years, but it but it cements why did I join and what do I want my Grange to do and what do I want my Grange to be known for in our community. And whether that's 
at the national Grange level or a state Grange level or at the community Grange level, which is probably what we're addressing mostly here this evening, it's, it's good for everybody to kind of take a step back and, and get on the same page, so to speak. And then, you know, we can talk about maybe later, I mean, those reasons that really help, um, help us when we have a mission statement. Uh, mission statements help us, you know, to, to uh, get grants if we're, if we're looking at writing a grant. And those are, you know, popping up like crazy right now in this time of COVID. And so that would be one thing to help you be prepared to be more successful in a grant is to have a mission statement. Um, it, helps, it helps with new membership. I mean, our Grange has our mission statement literally screwed to the wall. I mean, the, the frame that it's in is fastened to the wall where you can't pick it up and, and take it down. And so every renter, every person that comes into our hall to one of our events walks past, sees that mission statement, hopefully stops and takes a second to read it. And then they know, okay, this is what Five Mile Prairie Grange is here to do. This is who they do it for. And I think it just brings, you know, it's, it's so important to have everybody working on the, on the same page. And sometimes, you know, we talk about new members not getting it or, or they're, you know, they're thinking something else. And, and that's, that's our fault for not making sure that, that, we're, that we're bringing everybody in and, and that we're being inclusive in, in what we want our Grange to do and, and how we want to do it. So I want to just uh, real briefly touch on the national mission statement and the process we went through, because obviously that's a small group of people who helped put that together that's supposed to be reflective of the whole, but it's, it's kind of set in stone. That's not something, at least at the moment, uh, that's going to change in our, our local granges. Our local granges are the ones that we want to make sure to focus on giving tools to tonight. Um, but the mission statement of the Grange is, the Grange strengthens individuals, families, and communities through grassroots action, service, education, advocacy, and agricultural awareness. So Chris, you helped um, put that mission statement together with a group of folks in, uh, I guess we were in Kansas for our master's conference. I mean, yep, so can you talk a little bit about um, how you approach doing this mission statement? And then Brittany, I wanna go to you for a question right after that. Yeah, so the national mission statement um, was, a, was a really fun project, was an interesting project. And we started out by assigning homework. And because the national directors, the national officers, the state masters, presidents were obviously coming from all over the country. And, and we wanted to make sure that we were, that everybody had the chance to participate. So we, I sent out an email that said that this is what we were gonna do. And I was looking for words and phrases um, that folks thought should be present in the National Grange mission statement. And we gave them some parameters on what we were gonna do with the mission statement. As far as um, three, three things, if you're, gonna, if you're writing notes at home, these are our three key things for a mission statement. Um, clear, simple language, no jargon. So that's rule number one. Um, and these are Chris's rules. I don't know if you'll find them spelled out this way anywhere else, but um, rule number two is no fluff. Um, you want five to 14 words, no more than 20, um, which is really, really hard. You really have to to drill down and as far as what it is um, you're doing and who you're, who you're doing it for. And, and then the third rule is, is that this mission statement is not just meant to be an exercise that you do and you put away. It's meant to be useful. It needs to inform, it needs to focus, and it needs to give some purpose to your membership. So those are, those are Chris's three rules for a, for a mission statement. But the homework piece was to get everybody on board, whether or not they were gonna be present at the uh, conference. 
And that way they could have their input, they could send in their words and phrases. And then one of the keys is, is that your leader needs um, to have maybe a little bit of a degree in, in cat herding. Um, because in the mission statement, I mean, everybody has an idea about what words and phrases need to occur. And so you gotta be, you've gotta be good because it's not about what Chris wants, it's about what's best for this group. And so you're, you know, you're, you're adding and subtracting and you're calling on people to speak and you're making sure that everybody's participating and you're doing all those things as a facilitator, um, more so than, than worrying about what, it, what, what the end product is. You wanna make sure that there's good buy-in. You said cat herding just as the dogs were taking off. And so I'm pretty sure that they were trying to be involved in this mission statement process. I like it, uh, that you literally are getting everyone involved. So, so Brittany, um, you, you were part of the group then that also did this same process in Washington state um, and then took obviously from that experience and worked in your subordinate range to do a mission statement. So um, when you kind of heard this framework, did it make sense to you? Um, had it, does, did it seem like something that um, would work for getting a whole bunch of disparate people from all across the state together on one page? Um, how, how do you feel like that was applicable in that larger sense? Yeah, at the state level, it was really interesting because just the diversity of people and their opinions and everyone, every subordinate grange and, and county grange has their own identity, right? And so it was a merging of thoughts and ideas of getting to okay, what is overarching as a state do we want to do and want to be and want people to know us as. And so it was a really in-depth conversation. It lasted the better part of a day to pinpoint those words and fine tune all the thoughts and ideas that everyone had and everyone was passionate about what needed to be in that statement. So I think taking that back. So, so the process, I mean, it was fairly streamlined and it went well and everyone, I think everyone walked away feeling they were happy with it and they had a say in what happened. So that was good. I think that's an important thing to touch on because our granges, it's easier to have an identity. I think at that local level, because you know what you do um, and you know what some of the needs are, but it's harder to have an identity when it's disparate group across a large state like yours or, you know, at the national level. So, um, I think that kind of reinforces that these are a good structure, good three, three rules of practice or rules of play um, going into it. So um, both of you have been through this mission statement process at the local Grange, and that's kind of where I want to take this next, because obviously that's the, the part of this that is probably the most applicable to everybody who's watching. Um, Brittany, your Grange is the newest here. Um, and you guys, you know, have done this most recently, or at least you're in this process most recently. You mentioned that, you know, it was a new member, newer member, um, someone who hasn't been with the Grange for a long time, who wanted to take kind of ownership and leadership on this. Um, how did how did that work? And um, were there any parameters that you wanted to put in place with a group that didn't maybe know Grange as well as you would get if you were sitting and doing this at a state Grange level? Or yeah, so the member that kind of took ownership of it, he, um, his name is Justin Kittleson, and he's one of our charter members, like I said, still in the Grange less than three years. Uh, and how, what got him excited is that our state does these leadership conferences, so they travel to different areas and promote the programs of the year. And our lecturer really talked about encouraging people to uh, get, to create mission statements, and he really grasped onto that. And he took it into our meeting, and he was, like, yeah, like we need to have this. Anything I look into as a young professional is what's their mission statement? What's their goals? Like, why don't I be a part of that group? And so he was really passionate about having a message to put forward to the community about what we're doing and our identity. And I think having newer members re really brought, I guess, diversity, because although, although they're new to Grange, they're not new to the community, they know their community's needs and what they wanted to give. And so it was a really interesting collaboration of people who, some of us were in Grange a couple of years, some were like, you know, a couple months new to Grange, but everyone still knew what they wanted to provide for the community. And Chris, your group is, um, is almost split between some people who have not really Grange before and they're very new 
um, in your local Grange and that's where they kind of sit. That's their home. Uh, they don't do a lot outside of that local Grange level. And then some people who have been in the Grange for years or generations who have a lot of experience. Were there any additional parameters or things um, that were challenges when you guys sat and did this process um, that you didn't find when you had a group of people who had been in Grange, you know, for a long, long time as a whole? Well, actually, um, very similar to Moses Lake, um, five miles process was initiated by a, a fairly new member. At the time, the member had just um, been with us for and been in Grange for just a couple of years. And, and again, as a young professional, she saw that that need um, because she she recognized it personally and when she was talking to colleagues and and friends and neighbors about Grange and they'd say well you know what is Grange what do you do and and she was having a hard time kind of coming up with with what it was that five mile really um was doing and I mean there was lots of things that she could say but it, she just felt like it it sounded disjointed and it wasn't real clear and she thought if we could um create a mission statement that that everybody would be on the same page because there had to be some other folks like her and and it's interesting um we do um there's only a couple of us that that grew up in Grange so to speak and everybody else are new members and and their ages range um from teens you know up into the 70s but um but for the most part everybody's everybody that's active with us is is a new member and so it was a great lesson for for Dwayne and I to, to sit back and and keep our mouths shut and 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 participate but to listen to what these folks that are going to be you know they're um keeping those doors open for you know for the next years and years and years to of what they what they see Grange as and what they want Grange to be. And, um, and I think that's what, what made this mission statement work for us is that everybody was willing to participate um, and that they have, they feel now that they've got, and they, cause they do, they have buy-in in our future. Um, that it's not what somebody 40 years said is going to happen here it's what this group of people right now right here today want to do and i think that is so important and that's a piece i think that we miss oftentimes that we're we're doing what we've always done rather than making sure that we're addressing the needs of not only our community but we've got to make sure that we address the needs of our membership if you don't have the members you're not you're not going to get stuff done. So that's the piece that um, that I think is critical is what is it that we can do to make sure our members are engaged and and active and, and that have that buy-in. So for you two, um, are there any fence posts? Because I'm thinking uh, the next question I'm going to ask is about, you know, how someone goes about getting their, their group on board to create one. But before you even think about that, are there any fence posts or are there any, what I would call sacred cows? Um, something that if this isn't being at least discussed and somewhat alluded to in your mission statement, it's not a Grange. It's not a Grange mission statement. We have no sacred cows at five mile. <laughs> so no, there's, there are no sacred cows. I know there were a few sacred cows when we did the national mission statement, um, but at the community level with our membership today, and again, it's not a mission statement about what Five Mile Prairie Grange did in 1929 or 1959 or even 1989. It's what Five Mile Prairie Grange is doing today. And so a mission statement is not something that you write once and you put it on the wall or you put it in the book and you forget about it. It's something that, you know, I know at our, at our fire district, we review the mission statement every year at our, at our management retreat. Does this still 
say what we need it and want it to say. And the same thing should be happening in your Grange Hall. Is that mission statement that's hanging on the wall still what we want it to say? Brittany, what about you? Did you have any sacred cows that, or fence posts that you laid out first? No, like I said, we started it, everyone was really open, and but I did, and similar experience to Chris, is we were all thinking here now, what do we want to do in the next couple of years, knowing that we will evolve as a group. Uh, but I do want to say that that's one thing that's nice about Grange, is that every local Grange is so diverse in what they offer, that there's no reason to have any sacred cows, because every community is diverse, every group's diverse, and that's, the Grange is almost all encompassing, encompassing in that matter, so to have open minds and just think about what you want to do is what the process is about. So I'm going to um, ask you guys, um, what if if someone out there is saying, okay, we don't have a mission statement. Uh, sounds like it might be a good idea because it could focus us. And sounds like younger people are looking to have that in hand before they decide whether or not they're joining. Um, so it could be good for our membership recruitment ideas. Um, how do I go about getting buy-in? So your, your member came to you, you guys both had that kind of happen. Um, but how, if you might have a more reluctant membership or kind of a more stationary membership, membership that's been there for a while, do you go about letting people know that this is something important and getting the buy-in to actually do this? I think, I think having the conversation that, that we're just having, that you know, the importance of, of making sure that our Grange, our Grange's legacy and the work that it's done, the good work that it's done in our community for, you know, whether in the case of a new Grange, just for a few years, or in the case of a, of a experienced, you know, longstanding Grange, you know, for generations, basically, um, is we don't want to, we don't want to make, we don't want to have that go away. And so I think the mission statement is something that, you know, you, you couch it in the language that this is important for the long-term success of this Grange. And, and there are some naysayers to mission statements. I mean, that's not, that's not a, um, a surprise or a, uh, or anything. There are folks that don't think they're necessary that find them to be a waste of time. And, and I would argue against that, that, that mission statements are important, that they bring folks together and, and that it, it, it kind of allows that group to, to galvanize and, and to be a team around what they want to do moving forward and to make sure because the argument with long standing members that may be hesitant to participate or that poo poo the need for one is we want to make sure that the good works done by you and, and your family over over decades um, continues. Um, and so I think that's, I mean, that's one of the pieces that that um, that we use to talk about the, the the importance of this and you know and it's it's not real sexy and and you know there's lots of things that you might find to be more interesting but gosh darn it really is important and you know looking at our two granges right here um, two eastern washington granges um, that are probably a couple of the strongest granges in eastern washington and, and I think a lot of that goes to the fact that there's a membership that is younger because I think you, there's a connectivity between age and, and seeing the need for a mission statement. So I think it's a younger membership. I think it's a membership that's more cohesive in working together and one that sees the importance of having a plan of where they want to go and how they want to get there. And, and so if a Grange tells me that they have a mission statement, that's kind of like a check mark that, that they're okay. I don't need to worry about that Grange. Um, it's the Granges that are struggling to have this conversation that I worry about. Brittany, how about you? What do you think about getting buy-in? Or, you know, if maybe not buy-in, maybe everybody's okay with the idea of doing one. 
uh, making sure that all the voices in the room kind of are are heard, if if not acknowledged directly in the statement, because you know five to fourteen words and you have thirteen members or more, geez, that's going to be a little hard. Yeah, I did want to speak a little bit to the buy-in though, because one thing I really got, I did have a couple members that were like, what's the point? I think the biggest thing is, goes back to some of the stories we told. If you were to think of your friends that don't know anything about Grange, how do you describe it to them? How do you tell them what you do? It's that simple point of connection. And I think that hits a lot of people like, yeah, you know, it would be nice to have a go-to, here's what I do and not have to launch into a story. I think that won over a few people, but also this the conversation it opens up is amazing. So in developing our mission statement came about because we wanted to include it in, a, in one of our projects. But then from discussing that mission statement out of those meetings, three, almost four projects have developed now and are in the works and it helped us get excited about what we were, where we we're going based on what that mission statement said. And so it launched us, I think, farther than we would have been because we had those open discussions about what does community mean to us? What does diversity mean to us? Where do we want to be? What are we doing? And how exactly are we going to get there? And so I think for those Granges that are reluctant and those members that are reluctant, just think about what could spark out of that conversation. Yeah, you get your mission statement, but it's so much more beyond that that you get out of it. Do you mind sharing what your mission statement is? We've talked about these, but I failed. I failed in my list of things <laughs> to say, can you read that for me? So you just mentioned diversity and things, which I think somebody might say, hmm, how did that get in the Grange mission statement? So you want me to read mine? Yeah. Brittany, you yeah. start or you want? Yeah. I'll let Brittany so I guess start and read mine. Diversity didn't make it into ours. But that was one of the key words that we alluded to. But our mission statement is to help maintain family values and agricultural roots in the greater Moses Lake area through educational activities and community service. So, okay. And Chris, what's yours? Well, I will lead off by saying right now, if you're counting, we went way over 14, but um, <laughs> that was a concession. So it is what it is. It says the Five Mile Prairie Grange serves as the heart of the prairie by sponsoring events that build a strong sense of community and by promoting the common good. The Grange welcomes its neighbors to participate in wholesome and educational family-oriented activities. So I notice that both of you have in your mission statements the word family. Um, and I notice that you have education or educational. And National Grange's mission statement has agriculture education, but it's very specified, obviously. Um, so first, let me ask this. Brittany, when you guys got your mission statement together, how worried were you that it didn't sound just like nationals or just like uh, states? And why was it important that it did? I don't, I personally wasn't worried at all. And I think our other members weren't worried either because we knew with, underneath the national and state umbrella, we still have our own identity and we get to choose where that goes and who we are. And so I think we still follow the themes of what the Grange is about within, with still being our own identity and how we want to serve our community. Chris, what, it, what about you guys? Did any of you look at it and say, nope, this just won't fly? No, because I mean, I, I would agree with what Brittany said. It's, you know, it's unique to your Grange and to the members that were sitting at the table and, or around the hall or whenever you worked on it um, at, the, at, at that time when it was written. Um, it may be different, like I said, hopefully it's different than the one if they had done one years ago. And, you know, ours does not have the word agricultural. Um, you know, this farm girl grew up on a dairy farm and, and that's why my family got into the Grange was because of agriculture. Um, our Grange today um, within well, it literally sits across the street from with being within the city limits of Spokane, which is a pretty good sized city. Um, there are none of our members actively engaged in production agriculture. So, you know, that's not, it's not the issue or the concern, it's a concern for having, you know, a food source and, and that sort of thing, but, but our members are not 
in production egg. And so it was just, it's a different view than if I had done this process with the Grange I grew up in on the west side of the state. I mean, it would be totally different. And that's, that's what it should be. Everybody should be. And, and I hate to use different mission statements as examples because I, I don't want people to be constrained by certain words or phrases or thinking that they have to have something in them. It's, it's what your group puts in and takes out and puts it back in. I mean, Amanda, you were there in, in Kansas for that conference and, and you might've been the one running the computer as, as I was as facilitating up front, but you were crossing things out and adding things as fast as you could type with people with, you know, having comments. And so it's a, it's a, it's a vibrant working um, document that, you know, national needs to keep looking at as well as, as community granges to make sure that those things that we outlined um, are still important to us. So Brittany, you mentioned that projects have developed out of this mission statement. I wanna first go back and ask you um, how you plan or where you expect to put this mission statement, how you plan to use it um, yeah. beyond that. And then I wanna talk a little bit about projects that you guys have both seen develop because you know who you are. Um, so where do you think that we'll see your mission statement if we were in your community or how will you be using it? Yeah, so after, um, when our member approaches with having the idea, Justin, he said, we want to do this. And we're like, yeah, let's get on, let's do that. And we'll talk about it. Well, in that same meeting, someone else was like, why are we doing words for thirds? Like, why don't our kids have dictionaries? And so it became a like a dual timeline. Okay, well, if we're doing dictionaries, we're, we want labels. Where are we going to put them? Well, our mission statement needs to be in those dictionaries because those parents and kids need to know who we are. And so it kind of sped, I mean, it fast-tracked the mission statement to actually getting done because the goal was we want people to know who we are and what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, and so that's what kind of jump-started it. Um, and so that was the first step. And then from that also, too, God was talking about how are we serving our community? And we have a project where one of our members has a, a special needs adult son living in an assisted home. And they said, why don't we sew them um, shirt protectors, aprons, and why don't, that's something small we can do. There's only 20 of them. Let's start small and start there. And then because of COVID happening, a lot of farmers in our area are dumping potatoes and onions. And our members, a couple, a group of them have gone upon themselves, taken their trucks, gone out there, picked up potatoes and delivered them to communities because there was a need and they saw it and it was available. And it's all because th that conversation of how are we helping our community? Um, so it, you put the mission statement and stickers in your dictionaries. Um, is it something like Chris mentioned hanging on your wall? Is it in your brochures? Is it something you're hoping people memorize? Where else um, might you use it? Yeah, so right now social media has been a big thing. We put a post on, on Facebook about it um, just to get it in our community because we have quite a few followers now, people in the area from our events we've had. and. It's been amazing. I've had a couple of people messaging me asking about the hall and our building and stuff, but just seeing the community like and share and respond to that image and messaging has been great. Long-term, we do plan on putting a sign in the building. We have a, a hallway, kind of our brag hallway, with a couple posters of pictures and stuff. We want to add it to that. And for sure, an updated brochure, you know, we have people coming into our hall to rent all the time that ask us what we do and we have an area to hand out stuff so that that's the goal is to have it visible to those people in the community that are seeing us and wondering an advertisement in general. Chris, you mentioned that yours um, is on the wall in your hall. Where else do you put it? Where else do you use it? And then what's developed out of it? We, we do have it on a brochure, but I'm, um, I'm now all fired up to make a new brochure after watching your presentation on Sunday night. So there's going to be a new brochure and, and it'll be in the brochure. The other thing um, that we did was just put it on wallet cards for the members to have, um, just like the size of a business card so that if they needed to, you know, have a little primer or needed some support and, oh yeah, what was that? They, they could refer to the card. But I absolutely love the idea about putting the labels in the dictionaries because 
we already put a label in the dictionary that just says um, compliments of Five Mile Prairie Grange, but um, but I'd like I'd love I like the idea of the mission statement in there as well um, for them to to get a hold of us maybe with some contact information too that would be that would be fantastic. What about projects? Because you've had this since uh, 2016, I believe, or 17. Mm -hmm. um, what projects have you seen or what projects have you kind of measured against your mission statement when they've been proposed? What new things? Yeah, so, so actually, our entire way that we meet and, and do, do what we do changed with the advent of the mission statement. So we used to be a two meeting a month business meeting Grange, first and third Mondays, um, 6 p.m. business meeting, third Monday business meeting, first Monday business meeting. And with the mission statement, we decided that we wanted to try to um, walk the talk as far as being, you know, welcoming neighbors wholesome educational family oriented activities. And so we changed to the first Monday being an activity night where it was open to the community. We start with a potluck dinner and then we have some activity. Um, it could be fun like um, playing bingo or doing um, minute to win it games, things like that. It could be a, a community service event, like a blood drive, um, a, a collecting diapers for the crisis nursery, um, or it could be educational, like having somebody from the uh, extension service come and talk about gardening, having the guy come and talk about the US flag and the history of the US flag, have the fire department come and everybody gets to squirt a fire extinguisher and put out a fire. So we've done, I mean, dozens of things. I mean, one thing a month for the last several years that we're focused on it being wholesome, family oriented um, in order to get folks in the hall to come. And if they come for that one and they like it, you know, they'll, they'll keep coming. So this really, um, like I said, changed our tenor of, of what we do and how we do it um, for for the best. I mean, we're we're doing great as far as um, you know keeping our membership and and having the hall full for those events. So, Brittany, I know that you're an engineer, um, and there is such a thing as engineer speak. So, I want to I'm taking us back for a minute to the how how to steps um, that Chris gave. And I thought of you immediately when she said clear, simple language, no jargon. Um, not because I believe that you can't speak in clear, simple language or speak without jargon, um, but I'm wondering how you approached making sure that your mission statement was clear and simple. Um, and, and if there were kind of any checks and balances that you put on it when you guys were reviewing it. Um, or what suggestions you might have for a Grange who's about to embark in this process to make sure that at least that number one rule we, we hit. It's funny you say that because the member, Justin, who led this process, he's an, a structural engineer and he's more short-winded than I am in things. So having him lead it, I think, was part of the helpful process. But we kind of started with a brainstorm. It was, okay, what are these key terms? What are things we want to see? And it was just a round table, shooting ideas, someone's writing them down. Um, until we narrowed it down to like, wow, those three things keep coming up in everybody's mouth. Like everyone got a chance to talk around the table and what were the common denominators that everyone mentioned? And that's kind of what we started with. And then he took that home and kind of took ownership of it and created, I think he created five different versions of kind of the words he heard the most and brought that back. And we kind of dwindled it as a group again, down to I think two or three. And then we picked one and kind of tweaked it. And then we let it sit for our next meeting and we meet twice a month. So then the following meeting, whenever I had a chance to kind of sit with it and live with it and sleep with it, it was like, yeah, this is what we want. And this is what we want to do. We're all in agreement that this is how we should move forward. And I'm going to ask you the second question because Chris, Chris clearly did not rein her Grange in 
um, to that five to 14, 20 word max, but that's okay. Um, how did, how did you guys make sure, because I'm sure you had a whole bunch of people offering a bunch of different words. Um, how did you make sure to cut it to the bone, but didn't cut into the bone? Yeah, I think that was part of the dwindling down process too. Um, so we had those common themes that everyone talked about. Everyone wanted to make sure family values was there and community was there. Um, and agricultural roots was a big topic, um, but it was really, how do we word it? And we didn't want it to be as stagnant as like we believe in. There's really, we wanted a, like action. That's why we have, we're doing this through these things. This is how we want to accomplish it. And so I think getting, starting with the tone of what we want, how we want to present ourselves and then getting down to the nitty gritty of the words really helped because we all had that my, frame of mind of this is how it's going to be structured before we even got into the nitty gritty of the words. So the third um, aspect of this was useful, informative, and purposeful. And I think we've kind of covered that with some of the other stuff we talked about. So Chris, I'm going to toss to you the two questions that we've had from our viewers so far. Um, the first one's a softball. The second one's a little harder. So I'm going to tell you what the second one is. And then uh, I'm going to give you the first one to answer off your off the cuff before you figure out what the second answer is. Okay. Uh, Joan Smith asks, what is the difference between a list of purposes and how does that differ from a mission statement? So I want to take a minute. <laughs> list of purposes versus a mission statement. And then Tr Trisha Eadsmo from uh, Michigan asks, can a mission statement change often? So I know you've already addressed that, which is why I said that's a softball. You can have that one first. You know, that's why I like Trisha so much. So <laughs> she she helps me out. Now, Joan, on the other hand, I'm going to come after. Um, you know, and, and I think we talked about that a little bit is I think it's important and there's no there's no set guidance. And, and like I said, at the fire district, we look at it annually um, at the Grange. We haven't looked at it annually, but we, we have revisited it is making sure that it still says what you want it to say. So I don't think there's a hard and fast rule about how often, um, but if you, need to, if you need to change something, if the makeup of your membership has changed, if you know something that, that you've made specific in there no longer is, you know, pertains to your, to your situation, you probably want to take it out. So um, yeah, taking a look at it often is is a good thing i mean i look at it i look at it every every meeting because it sits on the wall right next to where we hang the charter and the charter we take off and we and we tuck away so it doesn't disappear um but that mission statement's screwed to the wall so um you know it's right there where we look at it every meeting um so, so then the second question was the list of purposes versus okay. a mission statement. Yeah, so, you know, I don't know if the list of purposes would be something more similar to like action items, maybe. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a jargon and I'm not the, the expert in, in writing articles about mission statements. Um, I'd love to tell you about the process of, of how we've we've worked with national and, and Washington State Grange and, and our local Grange. But um, I think the, the purposes thing is, is more detail. So like Brittany talked about her mission statement spurred activities that they did in their community. Um, I think that's, I, I guess I'm kind of thinking that down that line is the mission statement is, is gonna be overarching your purposes are going to fall underneath that um, and be more specific than the than the language of your of your mission statement. So I don't know if if Joan likes that or buys that, but final answer. Okay, I I would add that I think that mission statement is such a normalized term now, and you see it like when you are asked to fill out information on grants. Uh, different tax forms, different things like that. And a lot of times those things have a character limit or a word limit. And so if you put in a mission statement like what the National Grange just used to be, which was very, very long. Uh, I think we had 67 words or something like that we counted um, before we redid it. Um, 
you can't get all of it into the boxes that they provide if they're electronic or the space that they provide if it's on paper. So um, I kind of think it would almost be the same with a list of purposes. You may end up basically not looking like what someone expects you to look like. And I think we all know that when you don't look like, if you don't look like you fit in the box, sometimes you don't get the money that's supposed to go in the box uh, or something like that. So that would be, uh, <laughs> that would be my, my two cents on that. Joan, by the way, says she agrees. Um, so you're off the hook, Chris. <laughs> um, so what happens if you all get to a stalemate? Clearly that didn't happen. You both have mission statements. Um, but what are your suggestions if you get to a part where it just seems like there's two or three or four factions that aren't coming together, um, or there's, there's not really a cohesive idea of who and what you are? Um, and I'm going to have a follow-up to that, but what suggestions do you have, Brittany, for Grange that might feel like they're just not getting anywhere? Yeah, I think it's not, I mean, it's a problem, but it's not a bad thing to have, right? Having different interests within your group is, is a good thing. That's what makes it so great. Um, but I think one thing that really is useful is look for that common denominator, like those three views can't be so different. There's not one thing that unifies you. Like you're all come to that meeting, you're sitting in that room for a reason, right? What's that reason? And maybe start there and maybe you incorporate what's the most important thing from each group, you know? And so you can still get to that focused, but finding that commonality, I think is where it needs to start. Chris, is there a time where you say, okay, we're, we're having a stalemate here maybe we really do have two separate groups, two separate paths that we're going and we should consider a split. There's a divorce in the Grange family or do you just keep going? What's your suggestion? No, you, you keep going. You, you don't have a divorce. Um, and I think I want to bring up, we haven't talked about it yet, but there is um, an article that I send to folks when they want to talk about writing a mission statement for their Grange and and we had it in the second um, Good Day magazine that ever came out. So the second one of 2017, um, there's an article called Creating a Mission Statement and it's a page and a half and it talks about Five Mile Prairie Grange's process and and it worked and it's, it's simple and it's easy to follow. And, um, and that's what I send out. That's, um, that's what I sent to Brittany. And, and I'm, I just found out in the last couple of days that they, that they got their mission statement written. So, you know, there's another success story right there. But the very last bullet in this article says, don't be in a rush to come to a final statement rather allow time allow the time it takes for everyone to agree on the wording and so i think i mean i think that's important i think that there's there's nothing that says you've got to do it in one meeting or two meetings or or even three meetings it it's a it's a process and you're obviously going to have members come and go in that process who's there for the first night may not all make it back for the second night and so on. And so you need to be willing and um, and be able to catch people up and, and back up a little bit in order for that to happen and, and realize that the process is actually in a lot of ways more important than the final product because you're, you're building that, that camaraderie and that team concept and that, you know, just that the thing that makes Grange Grange and if you push people out or you alienate or or you absolutely tick people off that that have thoughts that you are saying aren't important or aren't worthy to to be considered they're not going to come back and so it's a it's a dance I mean some people are going to be more in, in uh, you know, in fast dance mode and some people are going to be more in slow dance mode and, and um, some are going to need to, you know, just take a chill pill a little bit and, and realize that um, 
good things come to those that 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 make it you know that just that take it nice and slow and there's there's nothing that has to get done in a hurry i mean it's interesting because the state and national ones we had a weekend conference right so um we had a session friday night we had sessions on saturday and and it was kind of there was more of a a feeling that we had to get the accomplishment we had to get there um but with your local grange um it's more important to make sure because you're going you're going to see those people a lot more than you are at the state or national folks right so you want to make sure that um you're not burning burning any bridges and having folks walk away because they're not um they weren't comfortable with that process Brittany, um, yours was done without a moderator. And of course, Chris, yours at the local level was kind of as well. So what about a, a person or a Grange who says, we just don't feel comfortable doing this process by ourselves. None of us are in an industry that's had an admission statement or, you know, whatever. And is there a, a need to have a moderator or is that something that really you think would have hindered your process if you had looked outside of your membership? I think that depends on the group, right? I mean, in our group, everyone was very familiar with what mission statements were and kind of what other organizations had. And so we kind of had a good idea what was going on. Um, but I do think that for groups maybe don't know as much, but they want to have that, or maybe there's a drift like we talked about. I think a moderator could help um, the progress and the steps, right? Having an unbiased person say, you know, and listen to both sides or all sides and, maybe they pick out those common words versus someone who maybe is invested and picks up the common words they want to hear, right? So having a moderator might help um, not expedite, but streamline that and get make sure everyone's voices are heard if that's a fear of that group, I guess. So I'd encourage people who want to do it to reach out to the neighboring granges or people in their state, because I guarantee everyone knows somebody that has either gone through this process at work or school or something that can help offer their services. Um, I'm going to look and see if there's any other questions at this point. I would encourage you, since we are kind of wrapping up, uh, if you have questions, please post them to our comments here on Facebook Live, or if you're on YouTube watching this, please post that there. I know we have about a 35, 40 second delay, so I'll make sure to wait um, a minute or two before uh, we get to closure um, to see if we have any of those questions. But in the meantime, um, what haven't we covered, Chris? Wow, I'm surprised we only have two questions. Um, that means that Brittany and I and, and you must have nailed it tonight. So that's a good thing. I think, you know, I guess some of the key things are, you know, we talked about earlier about what that mission statement needs to, to look like a little bit as far as being clear and, and concise and, and not be too long and free of jargon and those sorts of things. Um, I think it's important to reiterate that you, you can't be in a hurry. The more you're in a hurry, the more it's going to get messed up. You, you really need to go into it, um, not expecting it to happen um, overnight. And I think the part that we really haven't talked about a lot is, um, is the homework part, is to start it by having folks think about it and, and work on pieces um, on their own. And it was interesting at our Grange, everybody's there and, and we that issue comes up in the order of business and, and we're working on it. And slowly people start reaching into their pockets and pulling out these little wadded pieces of paper that they had jotted some comments and, and or some words and some phrases on. And, and every single person had something to participate with, had something to, to contribute. And I think that was, um, that was the key that we knew we were gonna be successful, is that everybody had decided that this was important and they wanted to be, they wanted to be a part of it. Um, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's like, it's like a lot of things, you've got to, you got to put a little work in and a little effort in to reap the rewards. And I think that that 
you know, hopefully that's where Moses Lake's at. And I know that's where, where Five Mile went after this, is that that process brought the group together, illuminated the path that we wanted to take, and then, you know, kind of showed us what that path was. And, and then we've been bringing folks in and, and um, you know, having all sorts of cool things happen since then. And I think, um, you know, it's kind of like the old proverbial snowball, right? Is, is the work is to get that snowball to the top of the hill. And, and, and the fun part is releasing it and watching it build momentum and, and grow as it adds more snow to it. And, and I think the mission statement is one part of that snowball process of building your Grange. And I, and I truly believe that Granges that can say, we've got a mission statement um, are on their way to being good to go. Absolutely good to go. What do you think, Brittany? I mean, your Grange has been chartered since uh, the end of 16 or 17, right? May of 17, yeah. Okay. Um, so is this, it has this kind of uh, allowed your group to hit the gas in a different way than you even had when you originally had that momentum? Um, you know, it, is it something that's propelling you now uh, differently than you were before? Yeah, so like any group, membership ebbs and flows and changes. And even though we're three years old, we're a different group of people than we were three years ago. People have come and gone. And I think um, it's propelled us in a way that I think we needed a rejuvenation, right? Everyone gets stagnant at some point. And having a reminder of why we're doing this and why we're part of it, I think is part of that launching off point of why people, the new members, why they joined and why they continue to want to be a part of it is because we have this mission we're working to it presently. So I think, yeah, that's a big part of it for sure. I think um, you touched on something that is gonna come up in another one of these uh, Facebook lives that we're gonna have soon and that's talking about generational differences. And, um, you know, because joining was just such a thing in other generations that you did um, and you had kind of more patience with the process sometimes um, and there wasn't as much of an expectation of what we have today as far as almost immediate satisfaction or, or the, the me uh, focus of things. Um, there wasn't as, as easy burnout, even though they may have been doing a whole lot more in their granges than we are in some of ours now. Uh, you've got a younger skewing membership uh, of a different generation and two and a half years into your Grange, not even two years in, uh, you guys had activities, but you were seeing burnout um, and, and needing a rejuvenation. And I think that that's so telling, you know, of, of what this younger generation um, goes through and as part of, of the DNA in some ways. So I'm kind of glad that you mentioned that and mentioned that mission statements uh, and, and going back and looking at, you know, where you're going and what you're doing is important in that aspect for a younger generation. So that's, a, that's a, I think, a really good and unique perspective to have. Um, apparently we killed it, guys. Uh, Lori Woost from Texas told us we did, so I'm going to take it as we have um, because we have no other questions. So I'm just going to leave it for final thoughts if either of you have any. No one's jumping at it. I would, well, I, you know, I always have a final thought. Uh, I would just say to, um, to everybody out there to, to have fun, um, to take this project as an opportunity to grow your Grange, to, to make your current members more involved and more engaged and, and to get yourself, you know, in a position to be attractive to more potential members out there to, to become members. And so that's, um, I mean, that's, that's what this does. This allows you to um, kind of be succinct in who you are and, and what you do. And, and hopefully maybe if you're going after some grants to help you with that process, but it's, it's really the, it's trusting the process. You know, I've said this before on one of our evening things is that, you know, on the wall at the gym, it says, trust the process. And, and we might as well write that 
on, you know, in every building that we go in is you've got to trust the process and, and it's going to make you better for it. So that's what I would wrap it up with. Anything from you, Brittany? Yeah, and I would say too, when you, if you start this process of your Grange, be very open-minded. And like I said, I mentioned earlier, we expedited ours, but I mean, it still took us almost three months. So how expedited is that, right? Um, so be open-minded and willing to hear everybody's voice. And I would not, if you're going to leave this in your Grange, I wouldn't read any other Granges. Like maybe maybe mention the national or your state has one, but getting hearing too many other mission statements gets you locked into a box you don't want to be in. You want to be unique to your group. Um, and so that's one piece of advice I have is don't overshare too many examples or even look at it yourself because you'll start to skew your mindset of what you think it's supposed to be rather than what it needs to be. All right, ladies, thank you so much. I just want to um, key you to uh, wherever you're watching this, we have posted the link to um, that two page document, that one and a half page document that Chris had referred to that appeared in the second good day. Uh, talking about how to do a mission statement that includes kind of these steps. Um, and hopefully, if you are interested in doing a mission statement, you know that you can reach out to us at any point in time. Uh, we can offer some assistance. Um, we can get you in touch with who, who you would like. And also, uh, we can make sure to provide you um, a link back to this video or, or any other instructions that we have on doing mission statements. So um, from from us to you, please be safe, be well, wash your hands. Have a great night, guys.